some time ago, maybe at the beginning of the year of 2022, maybe the end of 2021, I'm not exactly sure, but I had some Hebrew Israelites on. You're going to find out why I do not really speak to the Hebrew Israelites. These are people that do not tend to understand either because they don't want to or because they are incapable. I'm not trying to be belittling, but it just is what it is. It's hard to have a conversation with them because for them, in many cases, they feel like, or they at least project this, that the loudest voice is the one that matters. The one that tries to dominate the conversation is the one that is going to win. So I'm not really willing or wanting or desiring to have a conversation with someone who either doesn't have the ability to understand or doesn't want to. I think maybe it's maybe it's a little bit of both. I put out a couple of videos dealing with the Hebrew Israelites. One, that uh, it was not meant to be all encompassing in the argument, but just giving an example of why black people solely are Hebrew Israelites because the Bible speaks of in Romans 11 that there's a spirit of stupor given to Israel, that there has been this partial hardening, not to state that, and I said so in the video, not to state that all Jews, there, are, there will be no Jew that will come to Christ, but for the most part, the overwhelming majority of, of Jews in, uh, in the world are not going to come. That's what the Bible says. But what do they do? They went to, well, what about DNA and this and that and the blacks and, and African who are Jews and so forth. That wasn't the point. The point was to say that blacks in America, if they are the real Jews, then why do by and large black, people's, black people do not reject Christ? That's not to say that black people are actually all Christians. That wasn't the point. But again, it's, a, it's an argument that they either are not willing or capable to understand. I've had some other issues, things that I've said about them, such as their little prophecy that they think they fulfill, that we fulfill as black people out of Deuteronomy 28. But what about eating the flesh of our children? I don't recall blacks doing so when they came here to America. But that being stated, having a conversation with them is rough, difficult. Now, there are people that do that and I think do it well. I'm just not one who really wants to do so. Now, when they did come on before, I thought that they just did not handle themselves well at all. As a matter of fact, so much so that there are even videos where their other compadres did videos stating that they should have done a better job in handling themselves and said that this was an obvious answer here or there and they didn't look good. Well, I don't think that they ever do. I don't care if it's the top or the bottom of the Hebrew Israelites. I don't care which sect it is whether it's the IUIC, I think, the GM, GSM, I'm not sure the different names, but there really is no point in having conversations with someone who is not going to listen. But that being said, some people wanted me to put the video back up where I had the conversation with them that I think to me, as well as other Hebrew Israelites thought that it was pretty embarrassing for them. So, that being said, I'll go ahead and play the video, the clips. It's a couple of different videos put together just showing how some of these Hebrew Israelites just do not understand or have the ability to have a conversation because they don't want to. Not only that, I also have some other uh, clips where I'm giving a response or reaction to other Hebrew Israelites not being able to handle the uh, responses given to them by Christians. And so that being said, here is, here is that video that I took down. I want to get over on some things and kind of talk about what they believe. Not, no, you know what? Not what they believe, but their approach. Some of you saw uh, some time ago, a few about a week ago, maybe maybe two weeks ago. I'm not sure exactly the time uh, where there was a Q and A, and then there was a brother that came on who happened to be a Hebrew Israelite. I want to share a little bit of that with you guys, and then let's just cover this. All right. All the ones that are believing in him, all means all the Jews, all the Gentiles, all the ones that are believing in him. Ha, I mean, I'm sorry, hina pas ha pistuan ace auton me apolates, which means all the ones that are believing in him will never perish. The distinction is not made between Jews and Gentiles. It's all, it's all inclusive. In Genesis 12 um, and 3, that's actually uh, referring to the nation of Israel in Genesis 12 and 3, right? Um, no, Israel. no, you're not listening. You're not listening. You you are making, you're, you're, okay, listen. He says, he's talking about Israel. Is and if I can just get there? He, but he says, through you, all the nations of the world shall be blessed. So he's speaking about Israel 
and he's speaking about the rest of the world as well. You cannot leave out goyim. You cannot take that out. As a matter of fact, what does the word Abraham mean? It means the father of nations. Well, how many nations? Um, how many nations is Israel? That's one. He uses the plural. Is it fine if I can um, read something real quick? Hurry up! You gotta hurry up. Okay, awesome. So this is actually talking. This is uh, I'm gonna read Genesis 12 and three one more time. Okay. Uh, it says, um, "And I will bless. I will bless him." Because you understand, we're dealing with uh, the, the Bible. So this is it, when it says, uh, "I will bless thee." You can say I'm not saying it doesn't refer to the nations, all the nations, but he's talking on one specific nation which is mm -hmm. the nation of Israel. And how do we know this? Because he repeats the same thing to Jacob, I believe, right? Uh, go ahead. Watch this, Genesis 12 and three. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee, uh, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. He says that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, and then let's just go to Jake, uh, let's just go to uh, Genesis two. Hold on, uh, wait, a second, wait 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 a second. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Are you are you uh, a Hebrew Israelite? Um, yes, I I, I am a Hebrew Israelite. Okay. Sure. Do you do you do you understand Hebrew? Uh, no, I, I do understand Hebrew, but the thing okay. Here is my question. So you understand I'm Hebrew? Saying, what is what? Quick, listen, quick, listen to me. Quick, you understand I'm Hebrew? Not, I'm not, real quick. I'm not. Saying, Hold on. I'm wait a second. Wait a second. I'm I'm, I'm gonna let I you finish, say, but I want you to hear this. What I, does I want to get the scripture real quick? You can ahead. get the scripture after I ask this question. What does Kol Mishpacha mean? Like I said, I'm not. I don't know Hebrew uh, to the best of my ability. So you whoa, 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 uh, whoa! You just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just told me you know Hebrew, did you not? You just told me that. I gave you two words. I, said no Hebrew. Huh? What I, to say, right? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't sit here and say. Uh, if I, how would I say this? Excuse me, uh, or slap you, or my bad. If I did say I, I know Hebrew exactly. I don't know Hebrew as much as I do, or as much as I need to. Know. Do you know a little bit of Hebrew? Hey, do you know a little bit of Hebrew? Do you know a little bit of Hebrew? Yeah, I know a little bit of it. Not okay, what know. does the word kol mean yeah. in Hebrew? Kol? Kol. You say kol? Kol. What does the word kol in Hebrew mean? Enlighten me on it. I, huh? My phone is, it's a delay, so I'm... You just said the me. word. You, you, I you said, said my you phone said. is delaying, so you can just... What does the word coal in Hebrew mean? You can enlighten me on it. I don't know. You just said you know at least a little bit. Now, I want you to tell me the truth because you've been lying to me just this yeah, far. Said, you just wait, told me quick. twice. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, let you go so I can um, get with everybody else, but I, I appreciate just you, brother. Second. So, guys, here's the thing, and this is what happens every time. So, the word coal mishpaka is all of these families will be blessed. All of them. All of them. The word call is a basic Hebrew word. It means all, everyone, not just these Jews, everybody. Okay. And so no, Joshua, listen, I, I, I got to move on, brother. Like I gave you an opportunity and you didn't give me what I was looking for. You didn't give me what you were looking for. And so this is kind of the standard operating procedure. They have their list that they want to go through they have certain texts that they believe prove. Now, what you're going to find out is they have this inability to understand scriptures the way normal Christians do. Here's why. They tend to read the Bible the way Muslims read the Quran. The Quran is not written in any any type of context, okay? It's not any sort of chronological, chronological order to the Quran. And so oftentimes you'll see them if they're looking for a particular word uh, to try to fit their, let's say if they're looking for, and you're going to see this in a second, they may look for the word work or faith. And so they may think that that word work applies the exact same way in this text as it does that text. You're going to see that in just a little bit. And the problem is they're so geared towards proving their point, they're not going to hear. And this is kind of getting to my point. Let me just make this abundantly clear in case you don't get this going forward. No Christian on the planet really has any 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 reason to debate one of these people, uh, or I should say, the ones who are willing, who are not willing. That tends to be the overwhelming majority, if not all of them. Why? When was the last time you heard a Hebrew Israelite, and I mean, and what I mean by debate, one of those who are up to debate, uh, those who 
I don't know their different ranks and so forth. Uh, they're not willing to listen. And so you would be, I'm saying this to us as Christians, you would be foolish to try to go in and score points on someone who's not keeping score. You would be foolish to try to go in and settle an argument when they're not trying to. Their only goal is to disrupt. Now, the other day, I think it was the day before yesterday, I think that's when it was, there was one gentleman who has a channel. I think he's based out of Seattle. He emailed me a couple of times wanting to uh, have me on for discussion. No, I'm not going to discuss it. Uh, you guys are uh, not where I am. Uh, we are two different types of people. Uh, you don't, as we say, you don't cut for me. I don't cut for you. You don't like us. We don't like you. And so why you seem to be following us or following me, I have no idea. Uh, you guys get to be a little bit insulting and so forth, speaking about someone's manhood and, and if they're weak or sissy. Well, you tell me, how does it seem when one man keeps following and bothering another man? I don't know you, don't want to know you, don't want to entertain you, don't want to talk to you. But the other day, uh, one of you guys' leader came on and I was going to be cordial. I knew who he was because he put uh, as his as his uh, uh, sign, D-E-A-C, deep. Well, he didn't want to say exactly who he was, but I kind of had an idea and I knew some, some Hebrew Israelites would come on. And so if they get on fine, as long as they would behave, uh, then we can kind of keep it moving. We were talking about the Sabbath and some other things. And so he came on. And I want you all to hear a little bit of this and you all will kind of track with me and see uh, if you can understand a little bit more of my points. So now going back to the, the, the previous conversation, though, this young brother was trying to say the one who did not know Hebrew, the one who lied and said he did. Then he then he lied again and said he knew a, a little bit of Hebrew. His point was that the Israel would be the ones that would have salvation, but not the rest of the world. Well, the beginning of, of, the, of all the covenants, the one where um, you'll eventually have the old covenant come into play after this covenant, the new covenant, is the Abrahamic covenant. This is where God tells Abraham to leave his father's house, leave his ethnicity. So for any of those who are focused on their ethnicity, God tells Abraham, leave your father, your father's house, Leave your land to a land that I will show you. I'm going to make you into a great nation. Now, the passage that we were talking about was Genesis 12, 3, where he says, I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. Then he says at the end of three, and in you, all the nations of the world shall be blessed. And so he's clearly talking about all of the different families, not just Israel. That's what the whole term, that's why I was trying to get him to understand what called Mishpachad mean, which is all the families. And so he could not. And it would have been fine if he would have just simply said, I don't know if we could have just went down this track. But the problem is they don't want to let you know that they don't know. That's kind of the whole um, the whole plan for them. And so he was just not up to it. And I wasn't going to keep entertaining him. Go to this scripture, go to that scripture. No, because you can't keep you couldn't understand the script that you wanted me to go to in the first place. So this gentleman comes on and he asks a bunch of different questions. He he goes back and tells people that I only let him talk. Uh, just for a little bit, and I rushed him off. Well, see if you guys remember this. I'll go to his name is is Marco or Marlo. I think it's Marco uh, from I don't know. Was he Deacon Deacon? I forgot what his what his channel is, what have you. But anyway, let's play this, and then you guys see if. <clears throat> well, let's play it first. Okay. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for bringing me on the panel. Do you believe that Israelites have to keep God's laws? Well, I believe that uh, no one is able to keep his laws, not one. It's what uh, we're told that no one is able to do so. Uh, and because of that, remember, when God gives uh, his, his covenant, he offers his covenant, he also reminds them that they're going to leave. And he, and he tells them, and we know that because this is when I, when, when I bring you back. And so he's also indicated that how he's going to redeem them well. Why would you need to redeem them if they if they won't have fallen? So God is going to punish them. Uh, and so the point of the law or one of the issues of the law, it, it shows us that we by ourselves cannot keep it. As, as the Bible says, there are none good, not a single solitary person on this planet. Black, white, red, yellow, um, Jew or Gentile. There's none that's able to do good. So um, I believe that that's clear, okay. that there is nobody can, can who can, who can uh, keep the law. None. OK, so with that being said, can you uh... now let me just pause this here. This goes on for for a few more minutes. But 
he's asking questions, right? And you all tell me, am I answering this, his questions? Am I going down the, the track that he wants to go? He's going to make the statement that I don't answer his questions because in their mind, every time they talk to someone, oh, I'm killing this Christian. I'm destroying this Christian. I'm humbling this Christian. Well, do you all see the same thing happening here? I'm going to make this precise and concise so you can get to your next uh, next uh, interviewers or whatever. So can you exegete Luke chapter, Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 6? since you say nobody can keep God's law. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, and they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, uh, so are you, are you trying to say that they were, because they were righteous before God? Well, the Bible says that they were righteous before God, uh -huh. Keeping all the law, statutes, and commandments blameless. So do you agree with the text? I do. I do. Does that mean that they were perfect and they were sinless? It does not. There is no context. You said nobody can keep the law, though. That was, that was your statement. No. Okay. So what does it mean to be righteous before the Lord? And see, there is his, his fault. He doesn't understand the words. Because when it's saying that someone is righteous, uh, I don't know how he, what he gets this. The whole point of the word is that this person is in right standing. How is a person like Zechariah or any other Jew at this moment, how are they in right standing? This part he's not getting. And then he's going to act as though uh, that I am not talking about faith when, if you guys listen, see if you hear me talking about faith, because he doesn't. Lord. Well, the law makes you righteous according to the Bible. No, what makes a, per a person righteous is the atonement. That's the whole purpose of the atonement. God offers the atonement uh, to make atonement for souls because there is none able to, to, to keep the law. And so at so this the law don't make you right. No, at, at this dispensation, at this point in time, they were still under the old covenant. And so every devout believer, though they may sin, though they had faith in what God was doing, they stood righteous before them. How do I know? Abraham was, did Abraham, uh, did he ever sin? Sure he did. How was he considered righteous? Did he ever lie? Yes, he did. Was he ever right? Was he considered righteous? Sure. What about Jacob, who was a liar? What about Isaac? They were all considered righteous before God. However, we've got the scriptures verifying their sins. And so these, it's not to say that they were okay. sinless and that they kept all the law perfectly. They did not. And so the whole purpose of okay. the day of atonement, the whole purpose of, the, of their sins being atoned for is because they needed to be, they needed a right standing before the Lord. And the only way to do so is that there be this substitutionary atonement. Even before Christ came, okay. there was this substitutionary atonement, meaning or namely what happened on the day of, of atonement. So that's okay. all that, that means. Course. This is a person who was, who was doing his very best, who had faith in what God was doing. And that person was there for be righteous before the Lord. Like all of us, we are righteous. Okay. We are in right standing before Christ, I mean, before the Lord, because okay. of what Christ has done. Okay, so I, I just want to make this, I know this is your platform and I want to respect it. So, um, you know, I, before I have to get off because I got my own live stream going, uh, I, I, want to, I want to try to try to just get, get your viewpoint on. So this is Romans chapter two. Verse well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me say there. this first. Let me say this first. Before you go on your platform, because I, 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 I knew once I saw the deal, make sure when you go on that platform, make sure you say the Christian brother did, was not rude to me. The Christian brother let me on. So make. <laughs> I have no, I have nothing against Corey. Uh, you, you, you. We, we have some exchanges on the email, and yeah. I got respect for you. Any Christian who's willing to let some Hebrew Israelites on their channel, I have mad respect for. it, Period. So uh, this is Romans two and twenty six. Okay, I'm, we'll do this one, and then and then I got I got a scoot. I got a bunch of other folks wanting to come on. You said Romans what? Okay, then scratch that. Scratch that. Then scratch that because the whole question is is. Uh, you know, on your on your show, you said the Israelites, the law was for the Israelites. So uh, when we read Deuteronomy 30, it says that uh, verse one, it says that the Israelites, when they're in exile, this is Deuteronomy 30, chapter one, um, chapter 30, verse one to seven. It says that the Israelites would have to collectively uh, keep God's law, statutes and commandments in order to be returned from exile and brought back into the land. And I think that at least any Christian would have to agree with the text. Now, let me just pause that for a second, because there's someone here who I, who I, who I want to address. And I'm wondering, I don't know, uh, brother, if you happen to be a Hebrew Israelite or not, 
Uh, but uh, please don't say uh, things that just don't make sense. There is no new covenant, just a new commandment. Learn the difference, Christians. Well, I don't know what, what the point is that, that you're making, but if you're trying to say there's no such thing as a new covenant, well, then uh, we're going to have to show take you to Jeremiah 31 and other places where he talks about <laughs> this new covenant. So anyway, I wanted to um, uh, highlight that. Now, he is going to act as though uh, I'm trying to get him off. Now, remember, guys, this whole live was dedicated to other people coming on and speaking, asking their questions, issues about the Sabbath, about one saved, always saved, about the Trinity, anything like that. And so uh, he he was he acted as though I owed him this this moment. Remember, I I, I stated that I had a, a Hebrew band, not a Muslim band, but a Hebrew band. But I went ahead and and wanted to bring him on because uh, these guys talk pretty tough, right? They <laughs> they really do. So let me play some more of him because I want you guys to kind of get a picture of where he's going, and then tell me if I'm not answering him. For the Israelites. It's a requirement for them to get their salvation, which the definition of salvation is being brought back to the land and saved from your enemies, according to Luke chapter one, verse 68 to 72. Now, before I move on, he just said the definition of salvation is being brought back to your land, according to Luke one. Now, we'll go to that in just a little bit. All right. But I, I wanted to make make you all aware of that. OK, let, let, let me just go ahead and read it. And when all these things come upon you, the blessings and the curse, which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you and return to the Lord your God, you and your children and obey his voice in all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your soul. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy upon you. And he will gather you again from the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If you're out, if you're outcast, are in the uttermost parts of heaven. From there, the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possessed, that you may possess it, and he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. And the Lord your God will put all these curses on your foes and enemies who persecute you. Okay, and so you're telling me that means what now? Yeah, so um, according to this chapter, which is it's, it's the most high speaking himself, and he's saying that the Israelites would have to collectively keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You see, it says that I command you this day. It's no other law than the Mosaic law. It says at that point, he would gather them from wherever they're scattered, bring them back to the land, and circumcise their heart, all of them, meaning they would all be holy, and then the curses would get put on the other nations. I don't think any Christian apologist, theologian, or historian could give an example of this happening. This is a future prophecy, and, and, and most of Christendom would agree to that. So with that in mind, it's saying that the Israelites, it is a requirement for the Israelites to get brought back to their land and get their biblical salvation, which is being saved from the hands of their enemies pursuant to Luke chapter 1, verse 16 well, and 72. Well, and, I, and I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and, and, and leave it at this. This is a future prophecy that has not, um, that it's one of those already not yet prophecies where portions of it has, has happened, uh, where the other parts have not happened. Because what's also important is verse 6 where he says that, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offsprings. He has not done that with Israel yet. This, this um, covenant is with ethnic Israel only. And so the old covenant, the, uh, the Mosaic covenant has only to deal with them. He is speaking about what he's going to do with them. Uh, we see more of that progressively revealed as we go throughout scripture. So now you and I, obviously, we're going we're gonna to disagree on who's in play here. But listen, brother, I've got I've to go ahead and let you guys go. Uh, there are some other people that are, that are wanting to come on. And so uh, I appreciate this. Remember, um, uh, 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 what is your first name? That's what I want to know. Well, my mama named me Marco, but they call me Deacon. Okay. Uh, Minister Corey, as you as you kick us out, can you at least for your uh, for your audience um, break down? I won't have no rebuttal. I just want to hear your exegesis. Isaiah 56 and 6, it says the strangers have to keep the Sabbath in order to uh, come make his house a house of prayer for all nations. It's a now, I want to stop that because he asked, what was it, four scriptures, I think, four or five scriptures that we covered. He when you hear his explanation, and I don't know if I, if I covered the whole thing or if I recorded his whole explanation, but 
the way he tells his audience is that I covered one scripture and I hurried up and kicked him off um, because whatever. Now, he came on to cause a problem. Before I do that, though, before I, I talk about that, let's go to what he what he talked about, about salvation, according to according to Luke uh, 1, 68, that that refers to someone being brought back to their land. See if this makes sense to you guys. Verse 68 of, of chapter one of Luke, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David, as he spoke by the mouth of his prophet from from of old, uh, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember the holy covenant. Now, you guys tell me where in that does that happen to, to, to say that salvation is being brought back into your land. Oh, by the way, what they do sometimes, again, is they look for a word, salvation to be saved, and think this is this is speaking about the same salvation that we're talking about. And it's not, because salvation can be used in any sort of way. If I if I rescued someone out of the water and pulled them up, that the, the same word would be used there, okay? If I pulled someone out of a burning building, the same word. And so what these guys do is they probably get a concordance, do a word search, let's find this word, let's find, oh, there it is, there it is, let's, there it is. So it cannot mean that salvation is for just the Jews only. And, oh, by the way, that would seem odd since it's not a Jewish person who's writing this book. Who's writing the book of Luke? Luke is. Is Luke Jew? No, he's not. And so it just seems odd. They don't get that. Again, they don't understand context. They don't understand how to properly exegete. They've learned the word. They just haven't learned how to use the word. Now, this guy, you need to understand that he came on with some bad intentions, some nefarious motives. I want to play you uh, in his words. Okay, cool. I need you to do a huge favor because I'm on this I'm on this Christian channel right now trying to get them to bring me on to the front panel so I can gas this dude real quick in the spirit. Then I'm going to come right back on here. Come. I'm trying to wreck this Christian panel real quick and I'll be right back. This is great. This is great. All right, so Y'all, I tried, man. He got me off of the channel. He got me off of the channel. So I was on Smart Christian Channel. <laughs> I was on Smart Christian Channel, y'all. And let me show you guys how it went. You know me, man. I just go around messing with Christians, man. Okay, so now that's his words. That's why he came on. Now, you tell me, guys. Let's be honest. If the guy comes on, those are his reasons he wants to wreck the channel. He wants to mess with Christians. Do you think we have any reason to sit and have a debate? Now, in the email, I said, listen, you hold your views, I hold to mine. And because we're both staunch in our views, we're not going to depart from that. There is no purpose. It would be fruitless. Something like that. I can't remember how it was said verbatim, right? So there would be no reason why I would do that. But let me give you some biblical reasons why I nor you should have any of these sort of conversations. Let's go back to the scriptures before we go, go forward dealing with these people. Uh, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 7. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Well, so what's he saying? Trying to correct this this scoffer, this person who's already against you, that's not going to do anything. As a matter of fact, it'll probably get you into more trouble. It may it may come to blows, violence, uh, for you to be um, ostracized. Who knows? But if you're going to rebuke someone, if you're going to correct someone, let it be somebody of wisdom, someone that's willing to listen. Let's look, let's look at some more scriptures. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 12. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is what? Is stupid. Whoever hates reproof is stupid. Let's give some more scriptures. <clears throat> the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to his advice. The vexation of a fool is known at once, but the prudent man ignores insults. Now, the reason why that's important, that passes up, but a prudent man ignores insults, and it's hard, guys. It is hard when someone insults you. It's hard when someone offers these little threats. And when I say threats, they didn't necessarily say the threats themselves, although they did say that they could that they could see uh, 
something bad happening to us. And this was in reference to myself and k Dev when we were talking to Tate Up True when we were talking about Hebrew Israelites. And so they're always lurking. They're always around lurking, seeing what Christians are doing. And it, it, it isn't interesting that we don't sit around looking for what the, what the Hebrew Israelites are doing, what the uh, Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses are doing, or what the Muslims are doing. We don't do that. But everyone's looking around for us, seeing what we're going to do. Why? Because their father has them doing so. They have the same father. They really do. And so he says, <clears throat> the prudent man ignores an insult. Well, what insults are you talking about? Let me just show you. Bro. That, oh, I'm like sorry. By the way, guys, let, let me just go ahead. Stay. Let me just go ahead before I even get into it. Um, I put the warning up ahead of time. They don't they don't govern their mouths accordingly, even though they know that other people, maybe some younger people might be listening to them. And so you are going to hear. That's why I put the warning up. You're going to hear uh, maybe some profanity. You're going to hear some uh, some slurs and so forth. So I'm just letting you all know ahead of time. Here's a Christian minister, a pork chop pig knuckle damn milk dud head Christian coming at the Hebrew Israelites. He then teamed up with a, this is his channel right here. He's getting a little bit of steam, just a little bit of steam, but he's fairly new on the scene and he's doing a lot of clickbait. He's coming at Geno Jennings. He's coming at Marcus Rogers. He's coming at the Hebrew Israelites. And that's why I'm here today because nobody knows who the hell you are. So you started thinking like the most high gave you the jurisdiction to be the big bad wolf and go around and critiquing and correcting everybody like you're on some level. His channel name is, is a contradiction. It's his channel name, the first two words don't belong. Smart yeah. Christian. What? That's oxymoronic. You yeah. cannot put them two in sequence. And this guy right here, Minister Corey Minor, is very minor and not major like, like the men of God. He's very minor and not major. He's always minor and never major. Understand that? We do it major and never minor over here at the Sakari. So, I mean, pure evil. We're about to show you guys how much of a false prophet, false teacher, false minister, false pastor, coon, hater of himself, and unbeliever of the Holy Bible that this man truly is. All right? How much of a scary as individual of an effeminate borderline homosexual you gotta be to get somebody on your show to tell you about somebody else instead of bringing that somebody on your show and asking them no spine no backbone and that's all christianity we have to find a word that best fits a nigga like this <laughs> because the english language we could call him all kinds of stuff, but there's no words to really depict just how evil this dude. Only that's only where I get it's just pure, unadulterated evil. Statements like that, though, I don't respect him. Like, no, zero. it'll be very hard for me if if I seen some. If I seen, <laughs> it'll be hard for me to really just really respect this guy. Now, what he was trying to say, if I if I seen him, if I seen him. And the other, you know, the the the, uh, the other youngster, those are talking. <clears throat> Can I just be honest, y'all? Now, this is this is me. If you saw me, you would do absolutely nothing. You would do what you did when you came on there. You would be nice and deferential, which you should be. You guys have to figure out how to make your point without being threatening. No one respects all this tough talk. It it demeans if you had a point, which you don't. But if you had a point, you are hurting your own cause. The yelling, the name calling, the insulting. You don't have to do that. You really don't. Make your point. Track and follow. That's why I said, and I've had conversations with them before, um, be it in prison, out, out of prison, all over, and you get nowhere. And afterwards, I have never, I've never once had a conversation, never once had a conversation with someone uh, who's a Hebrew Israelite and walked away thinking, you know what? That was a good use of my time. Never did. It was always, well, look here, black man, this and that, and, and, and then it, it 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 evolved into something that was, you know, um, a whole lot of high energy and, and and talking like, listen, let's let's stay there. You stay there, I'll stay there, and if you think I'm I'm I'm, I'm misled and so forth, well then fine. Now they didn't they didn't devolve into to the name calling because, you know, especially in prison, you, you're not gonna call certain people names to their face. And the guy on the chat uh, who I, who I put off aside. He called me a B. He tried to fix it and says, no, he said, because he, he made a, a, an apology video 
saying that the guy said, I ran like a bee. No, he said, you ran. And then later down, you guys didn't see it, but I could see it when I, when I blocked someone, I could still see what they're typing. He called me a bee. Nothing before that. Okay, cool. That's cool. That shows what, what kind of person that he is. That's cool with that. Listen, like I said, you can call me all sorts of names. You really can. You can talk about me, my mother. You talk, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Keep it moving, buddy. If you think that less of me, hey, more power to you, brother. But let's go ahead and continue. For the statements that that, that he's made. This guy he right here, like, he's one of them niggas that thinks because he talks in a certain type of voice and he uses certain type of words and he's read all these books behind him. I have a cool... What are the certain type of words that I use? What, English? I, I'm trying to figure out what are the certain type of words that I use because I read. So you ought to read some books. That would help. You ought to read some books and you ought to get a good grasp on the English, English language. Now, I'm looking at him. Brother, you know, you are not the person who are who ought to be telling black folks how to be, because let's just be honest. I'm looking at you. Somebody white is in your family. You you try real hard with the cornrows to try to, you know, impress uh, the other darker skinned brothers. But. Why don't you pick up a book? Why don't you read it? Why don't you understand? I tell you what, you Hebrew Israelite, why don't you learn Hebrew? Do that because then the scriptures will make sense to you. Then once you finish with that, learn Greek. Then they'll also make even more scriptures in sense. Before you do that, get a good grasp of English and how you actually read a text. Let's do that. So job that that makes him better than other people, than his own people. He's the type of nigga that look, that will stick his nose down at, the, at his own people. Because he might be in a certain position in life. I'm, I'm just gonna have to ask you. Are, are you? Now, let me let me pause because I, I, I want to bring in uh, this conversation that uh, James White had. And this guy, I don't know where they dug this guy for. This guy has no clue, uh, and he's lost. Now, the one thing people say about James White is that he might be rude. He's not the nicest. He knows his stuff, and <laughs> no one says that James White uh, is dumb. <laughs> You're not gonna come away with that. And so I don't know who who set this up with this guy. But he does not accord himself very well in talking to James White. Listen to some things that he says. And the issue that I have with, with a lot of them is that they just don't know how to handle themselves with any sort of decorum. And James White has to kind of get on him for that. Able to chill out enough that we can uh, proceed with the other questions or because right now you seem to be dominating and getting a little yeah. bit on the angry side. Are you going to be able to chill out enough for the last question? Brother, let me make this clear, though. Okay, with this angry thing. See, also, I can understand the... Uh, uh, let me tell you, you, you're really slick. Because you do it a different... That's way. a very... That is a very disrespectful thing. Maybe you don't mean it disrespectfully, but it sounds like you're saying that I'm being deceptive or something like that. Sir, Absolutely. I've done... I've done That's over, what I'm saying. Oh, you, you are saying that. Okay. So don't be scared when you see real men being masculine and assertive. Because the Christians, and that's what was on his channel, like a lot of women, a lot of old black women. There's not no strong young men. Who now, he's talking about you guys. He's calling you guys weak. And he's saying the whole channel is full of uh, a bunch of women, weak women, and weak men. Let's just hear him. Supporting his ministry. Because Christianity is just full of women and feminine men. And that's just true. You go to any church, it's just women and feminine men. That's it. So um, most of his ministry is probably like 80 percent women. You know what I mean? Is that the army of the Lord? <laughs> now, I want to pause. No, you know, no, I'll, I'll, I'll show in a second. I'm going to show you guys something saying that we were scared to go on his show. You left a comment a couple of days ago saying if you really want smoke, go to his channel. I went to his channel. Did you see how he got obliterated within under 15 minutes? And did you see how he kicked me off and let everybody else stay on? How do you think, since you since you told me to go over there, like niggas was scared of this dude, like he's just somebody, his channel's rather new, never really heard of the guy, he ain't no type of Debo out here or nothing. You told us to go so over there. Someone on his channel was saying, go over there and, and, and debate him, debate me, which I'm not gonna debate. And I did have a discussion with him, but again, did he obliterate me? I answered all of his questions and he came on and said he had to go somewhere, but we all knew what his motives was. I knew it ahead of time, but then he even said so, and I played those. But now, he made a statement, guys, about, and I just want to show him something, uh, about the, 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 the number of people or the, the uh, demographic of the people that, that watch this. 
uh, this particular show. So let me just show this real quick. Let me see if I have it up here. Uh, where is it? Okay, here it is. You all see this? This is the demographic of this channel. 61% of the people that watch this show are men, right? Not women. Not that it means anything. Not that, not that it has to, uh, that if it were majority of women, but just, he's just a talker. Okay. Oh, by the way, what's, what's kind of interesting, guys, if, if you ever wonder what was the age breakdown of most of the people, um, most of the people in, in this audience are older, mature people. Uh, we've got a good amount, 25 to 34, but the majority are from 35 on up. In other words, the grown, show enough grown folks, right? So anyway, I just wanted to pull that out. Now, something I want to also show you, he's doing a lot of um, insulting uh, about me and you guys and so forth or whatever, but I just want to remind you guys of what he said. Okay, yeah, well, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for bringing me on the panel. Before you go on your platform, because I, 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 I knew once I saw the deal, make sure when you go on that platform, Make sure you say the Christian brother did was not rude to me. The Christian brother let me on. <laughs> I have no, I have nothing against Corey. Uh, you you you. We, we have some exchanges on the email, and yeah. I got respect for you. Any Christian who's willing to let some Hebrew Israelites on their channel, I have mad respect for. It, period. And yeah. I got respect for you. Any Christian who's willing to let some Hebrew Israelites on their channel, I have mad respect for. It, period. Any Christian who's willing to let some Hebrew Israelites on their channel, I have mad respect for. It, period. So that's his word in front of us. Go back and see um, him talk to his people. Oh, I, I, I destroyed that guy. I have no respect for him. Well, which is it? See, I would even respect you even more had you came on here and talked that same talk that you talked to the other people. Call me all those names and so forth. Let's see how I can, how I can port myself. Now, do you all think it would be wise of me or any other Christian to go on to that channel and to hear him? whatever he's got to say. No. So <clears throat> matter of fact, let's consult again the Bible. See what the Bible has to say about talking to people like that. Notice what it says in Proverbs 15, 12. A scoffer does not like to be reproved. He will not go to the wise. A glad heart makes a cheerful face, but sorrow of heart. I'm sorry. I went too far. That's, that's all I wanted to cover. Then <clears throat> how about Proverbs 26, 4? Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him. So get down on his level, you'll you'll be seen like he like he is. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. And so what you ought to do is kind of put him in his place. You know what? I'm through with you. I'm not talking to you. So now let's go to another passage. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor nor sits in the seats of the scoffers. You know what that means? We're not hanging out together. We're not going to talk. We're not going to sit and break bread. You've already indicated where you are. Matter of fact, you did me a favor and I'm doing you a favor. I don't want to listen to what you have to say. Everything that the Hebrew Israelites talk about in terms of salvation, so in terms of their cult, their religion, it is utter garbage. Did you hear me? That should give you an indication that I don't want to have this conversation. That should tell you, stop coming to the channel. Stop listening to us. Stop listening to me. Okay. Now I'll go out on the streets and I'll, I'll share the gospel. Someone, I saw someone ask, have I ever gone out? And that's what I used to do. That was my first ministry, outreach ministry. And who I would preach to were people who were receptive. If a person doesn't want to hear, and this, this is whether this person is a Hebrew Israelite or not. If a person doesn't want to hear, I'm not going to just sit and waste my time and just uh, kick my head and bang up against this this brick wall. The person want to hear, so I'll keep it moving. Right now, I want to play give a passage because I've been in the Old Testament. I want to give you all some New Testament stuff. Okay, <clears throat> here we have in uh, Titus. Let's read this passage. These things. This is this is Titus three nine. But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions and quarrels, quarrels about the law. You know what they are always wanting to bring up for they are unprofitable and worthless for a person who stirs up division after warning him once, then twice have nothing to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful and is self condemned. Did you get that? Warped, sinful and self condemned. So this is not just to me. But this is for people who want to go out and speak with these people. Don't do that. 
Here are the scriptures are telling you, do not go and engage these people. Once you know where they stand, now, if you find one of them, one of, one out of a million who is open to speaking to you, who is open to talking and having a, a healthy dialogue, then fine. Uh, don't do it when he's around his peers. You, When you got the guy out there who is um, with the microphone and he's got his buddies around, his readers, you're not going to make any progress. Don't don't stop and engage him. Keep going. They want to talk. Let them talk. Let them let let them talk to their to their to their uh, satanic father. Let that be the audience. Most people see who they are. We're the only ones giving these people any kind of time. We might be the biggest reason why they even have any sort of um, a, a footprint because we're the ones wasting our time when we've got more to do than deal with these people. Right now, the biggest issue with these people is that they just don't know the scripture. Let me, let me play this. Um, uh, set of videos for you all so I can kind of show you how they just don't know the Bible. He didn't sin. He didn't sin. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me word this correctly. Abraham didn't sin because it's not a sin to lie to a heathen. I know you Christians are going to get all messed up about that. So he says that Abraham nor Jacob nor Isaac, they didn't sin. Uh, he, it's not a sin to lie <laughs> to a heathen. You can lie, but if you lie to a heathen, uh, it's not a lie, right? That even makes sense. Well, that's him trying to cover himself up because he doesn't know the Bible. Can you tell him that he doesn't know the Bible? No, he's going to think that you don't know the Bible, but that's why all you're doing is bumping heads and you can waste time with someone else, right? Not with him. Faith is a work. And how do you show your faith? According to James, the Lord's brother. And so what he's doing is he's attempting to show that uh, you have to work for your salvation. So what did he do? He went out and found a scripture that had the word work in it. Now, look who the work is about. You show your faith by your works. <laughs> now, look at this. John he, chapter six. He's talking about the work of God. Notice he focused on the work of God. <laughs> so you do a word search, you come with the word work, and there you go. Verse 29, Christians get so mad. Oh, it's, it's, it's by faith, not by works. Well, so, works is of the law and work. Uh, I'm sorry. Faith is in the law. Marco, the law and faith work your little heart's content. Work away. John 6 and 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. Here's a work. And so this is where it's just, <laughs> it's sad. Because who is the work? of this is our work right now it, it, you just it, this is the work of god it's sad and hot and, and disheartening to see someone so lost so biblically illiterate trying to tell other folks how much he knows and how little people who actually know the scriptures don't know that ye believe on him who he has sent Belief on the Messiah is a work. So we're told to have faith, believe. The word that's used there is faith. The word that's used for work, poie, is the word that's used for God. <laughs> I don't I don't see well, that's not evident. See, that's the problem. You didn't say nobody can be perfect or sinless. You said nobody can keep the law. Now you're repackaging and changing your argument. And so what he's doing right here is he's going over what I talked about and he didn't get it. He didn't get what I said when a person is made righteous or in right standing not by uh, keeping the law. No, they could not keep the law. They are in right standing by, at this point in time, uh, at this time, by what happened on the Day of Atonement. They, their sins are atoned for, and he didn't get this either. For how long, guys? For one year. That's, it's a yearly thing that kept them in right standing, and they had to approach it with faith. The same thing happens now. This new atonement that we have, we have to trust in faith. A lot of people believe that Jesus died on the cross, but there's no faith, there's no trusting in him. And so therefore, it doesn't matter because even demons believe, right? And so there's a lot of folks that believe, yeah, Jesus died on the cross, I know that, but they, they have not placed their trust in him. And so they're not saved, even though atonement was made for them. Are you with me? Furthermore, and so he's not catching this. Job was perfect. King David was perfect. Job was perfect. King David was perfect. Are you all, are you, are you hearing this? There is no context. And it says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob committed no sin. It says, therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, who you think is your Lord and Savior, Jesus? So he talked about <laughs> Jacob and, and Abraham, but then he goes to a passage speaking about Gentiles. 
if they do the right thing, then he, <laughs> this guy's he's Christ. funny. Told you that John the Baptist was Elijah in the reincarnation. And they also believe in reincarnation. An eyewitness account. I'm not talking about Luke, who came way later, to whatever. I'm talking about an eyewitness, Matthew, recorded Jesus Christ saying that John the Baptist is Elijah. Not in the spirit of and he is Elijah. Your Lord and Savior said that. You got to deal with that. They try to act like reincarnation is so funny. Technically, Genesis is technically not the law. The law. Now, here's, I didn't see that. Here's this, here's a uh, skinny man right here. The guy that wanted to, you know, do, do the talking. <clears throat> now, what he's not doing is doing the tough talk like he was before here. Now, this is, this is Eric Mason. Some of you guys may have some issues with him on, uh, on social justice issues. I do too. But in terms of his doctrine, Eric Mason is actually, he's straight on that in terms of his doctrine. You know what he doesn't do? He's not going to get too insulting. You know why? Because he's going to look and see who's standing right beside Eric Mason. Does it really start exegetically to Exodus? That's not true. That's just simply not true. You're now, Eric just told him the law did, let me back it up so, so y'all can hear it. And you can't sustain, you're not, and you can't sustain. count. I'm not talking about Luke who can't. Wait, hold on, no, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Back this up, right? I want you to hear what he said. Technically, Genesis is technically not the law. The law doesn't really start exegetically to Exodus. So he, he's telling them the law is not in Genesis, which is true. The law was not given in Genesis. You don't have to be uh, the highest level of Hebrew Israelite to know <laughs> that the law was not given until Moses gave it in Exodus. That's why it's called the lawgiver. That's why. The, uh, it's called the Old Covenant or the Mosaic Law because that's when it was given, not in Genesis. Not true. He says not that's true. simply not true, and you're not, and you can't substantiate that. Now, now, so what do you do with a person like that? Do you continue to try to rebut this person? Well, you could do so if he's not going to listen. Some people don't know water's wet and fire's hot. Some people don't get it, and so for that, I had a buddy in prison. Who said that his father gave him a lesson? He said he wish he would have learned a lesson. He said he said this: when you find a dummy, leave him one. Sometimes people just will not change. Sometimes folks have just, are just dead set against learning. Now, in their case, I don't know if it's head issue or heart issue, but it comes up the same way. Their heart might be so against that they don't want to hear anything at all, or it could be their head. Well, they just don't have. Uh, my wife said she's a teacher. She said that some people just don't have comprehension skills, honey. Some people you tell them something. And it doesn't, it doesn't resonate. It doesn't, uh, wires aren't touching, right? So I don't know what it is, but they're off. No, hold on, wait, 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 no, hold on. You got to read the whole read passage. What does context mean? It means read the whole passage. No, it does not. What does it mean? What does the word mean? Context is the whole. No, what does the word context mean? Let me, let me answer this question. Now, you, now, you brought up a now, what he will not do is turn around like they do when it's just them and call all those men weak men. He, he's not going to do that. I can promise you it ain't going to happen. Justify. Do you know what justified means? Uh, do you know what justified means? No, answer means? the question, man. I'm ask, every time I ask a question, every time, no, no, notice every time he asks a question, I'm able to go into the Bible and answer it. Every time I ask him a question, he doesn't answer the question. Well, because y'all, it's like talking to a damn wall with y'all because you're not answering the question. The Masoretes injected the information that they... Now, this guy here... As they used to say in the 50s and 60s, this guy's a beaut. This guy is hilarious. He's not intending to be hilarious, but what it almost makes you want to just kind of just wrap your head in, in in duct tape so your head doesn't explode. I mean, this this <laughs> control going forward. Into what? We're not listen to me clearly. I'm trying okay? to. I'm just asking. You said they injected. Into what? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Into our modern day publications. Let me make this clear, okay? Again, even Hebrews went off. Our people went off in the Old Testament and began to scribe to the fallen God. To the, and, and that's why it tells us in Hosea, the second chapter, in the 16th verse, and it shall be at that day, saith the Most High, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall call me no more Bailey. When you look at that word belly, that derives, and your strong concordance, you can go ahead, go there, from the word Jehovah or the Tetragrammaton. So we began to scribe. Did, did you already say it? He, 
and, and James White is going to get on. I that name in reference back then. The Masrits just continued it. Bailey? It. I, wait, wait, I, wait, wait. Bailey me, is from Baal, me, sir. That's from sir, Baal. You, sir, you think I don't know Baal? Ba Bailey is from Baal? You just said it was from the Tetragrammaton. Sir, this is what you need to do. Okay. Go. You have your strong concordance? In sir, sir, I don't use strong concordance. I teach Hebrew. Now, one of the things that he's also going to go ahead and cut it off right there is that he is trying to make the statement that uh, the Masorites came and uh, distorted the Tetragrammaton. This is where we get the uh, the four letters where we might say it's Yahweh or Jehovah, uh, and that that was distorted by the Masorites. However, uh, they didn't start adding. They didn't start coming back and writing these until uh, a few centuries later. <laughs> and so... Uh, 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 Dr. White reminds him of that, and then he says, well, I knew that. I so anyway, what do you do with people like that? You cannot, you cannot, guys, listen to me. You cannot argue with someone who is dead set against learning. You just cannot. And so I want to make this abundantly clear for me. If anyone wants me to debate or to talk to a, a black Hebrew Israelite or a, a Hispanic Hebrew Israelite or any other Hebrew Israelite, nope, not going to do it. Not going. I would rather spend time trying to teach one of the dogs here how to talk. I'd get further along. I would rather spend time trying to figure out how to levitate. I'd get farther. I'm not going to make any headway with them. And that's fine. I can guarantee you what's going to happen is clips of this will probably be played. Uh, the, these 14 dislikes and probably more to come, those are from Hebrew Israelites. And so why are you here? Why are you on this channel? What is it you're trying to get? You're not trying to learn anything. 15 dislikes. You're not trying to get anything out of this. Fine. Go back to the four or five sites. I don't know how many sites you guys have. Go back to those. Continue to be indoctrinated. We're good. We are, I, I promise you, all the people here who love the Lord Jesus, we're fine without you. Go ahead and do what you're going to do. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Now we're at, at 18. Maybe it'll be 20. You won't, you won't outnumber the likes. I can promise you that. I can promise that. And if you did, wouldn't bother me because I know who holds my future. See, I'm a child of the King. I know what Jesus has done for me. I know what my life was like before, and I know what he's brought me through. 